Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, we are deep, deep in the rainforest of, uh, I guess, the ancient Mayan world here in the Yucatan Peninsula today. Uh, don't know. Well, I don't know uh, exactly where this camera is looking. I don't know if, <laughs> where I am, but anyway, uh, it is a gorgeous Sunday afternoon deep in the Yucatan rainforest in the Mayan homeland. Um, here on this gorgeous Sunday afternoon, January 29th. 2023 I believe and maybe you're just looking up into the branches of the rainforest instead of looking at me but that's fine but anyway we're gonna do a little preaching to the choir today uh, we're gonna go back over to medium.com and hear from a fellow I have never heard for John Austin John Austin now that I signed up, he has 31 followers on the planet. This man has 31 people uh, reading his writing on the planet. John is a writer on environmental issues, especially overpopulation. He doesn't wash his hair using shampoo. He picks up litter every day and grows French beans and uh, I can just see we're gonna my problem with this camera is gonna keep sliding down uh, <laughs> here in the class anyway you guys just enjoy looking up in the branches of the rainforest and but John is going to uh, preach to the choir to 31 people on the planet with his rant of the week. Eight billion, our greatest mistake. Take it away, John. Preach to the choir here at Chronicles of Collapse. Eight billion people alive today is a milestone in human history. We accept this figure as though it is normal. A minor news story, nothing to worry about, but it is the most dangerous place we have been in the history of civilization. In only 11 years, 1 billion people have been added to our numbers, a number that is still rising and not set to peak before the end of the century. 8 billion people on the planet. It is unprecedented and unsustainable unsustainable meaning logically that it will fall but how and when it meaning civilization will fall is not discussed as it means facing an inconvenient truth when you take a look at the figures where we actually are it is truly mind-boggling how we have just walked blindly into this mess. Our numbers have quadrupled in the last hundred years. Fossil fuels have enabled us to multiply by providing us with a blast of energy and food, resulting in us massively overshooting our planet's capacity. We found the energy, we took it, and we burnt it as fast as we could. Now we have gone into overdraft, but we are still spending addicted, and there is no easy way to stop. Isaac Asimov once said, overpopulation is more dangerous than nuclear weapons, which you make an active decision to use, but According to Isaac Asimov, quote, to bring about destruction by overcrowding, there is no need to do anything. 
we need only do what comes naturally and breed and how easy it is to do nothing. Close quote. Thank you, Isaac Asimov. <clears throat> Back to John. We have done almost nothing to prevent overpopulation, and the writing is now on the wall. The impacts are going to hit harder and harder in the coming decades as the effects become exponentially worse. The climate is changing and is going to change faster. Temperature records are broken annually. Polar ice is <coughs> polar ice is melting and the oceans are acidifying. Plastic pollution is everywhere within 30 feet of where I am sitting in the rainforest. There is no shortage of plastic pollution. <clears throat> we have a fresh water crisis. We are depleting soils, relying on artificial fertilizers to grow enough crops to feed ourselves. We are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction and have lost 69% of vertebrate animals in the last 50 years. The shocking list goes on and we are becoming used to one disaster after another. Change is becoming the norm. There are two ways out of this. The first is a massive reduction in consumption lessening our use of fo fossil fuels, less eating of meat, less flying, less driving, <coughs> less stuff. But this is very difficult to achieve in a capitalist growth-based system that constantly bombards us with messages to spend, spend, spend for the sake of the god of economic growth. Many of us are looking at this answer, you know, reducing our consumption of the planet, while turning a blind eye to the second answer, which, simply put, is to lower birth rates, a possibility that is rarely discussed for many reasons, all spurious, but reducing the birth rate is the easiest and most practical thing to do. All it takes for contraception... <coughs> <coughs> yes, all it takes is for contraception to be made freely and globally available. Hmm. If the average global fertility rate were reduced by just half a child on average, the population would peak and decline far sooner than if we did nothing, <clears throat> and it could result in several billion fewer people by the end of the century. The long-term benefits of reduced fertility rates are immense. It means we can bend the curve on population. <coughs> A world... <coughs> Damn it. I knew I should have brought a plastic bottle of water out into the rainforest with me for this rant. <clears throat> a world of diminishing resources will be able to cope much better with a smaller population than with a larger one. The quality of life for everyone will be much better when there are fewer of us. It is a small change that has long-term impacts. Had we acted sooner, we would not be facing the existential crisis that we are facing now. <clears throat> so, why have we done nothing? Well, John never mentions whether or not he is a breeder. 
and since he doesn't mention that he's not a breeder, I'm going to guess that John's a breeder. <clears throat> so, why have, you know, we breeders done nothing, and why do we continue to do nothing? Now, obviously, by that comment, guys, I'm not suggesting uh, I am a breeder. I did something at age 22. <clears throat> anyway, so why have we done nothing and why do we continue to do nothing? Talk about population size has been shut down from all corners. The left won't talk about it because it doesn't fit their narrative. The reason given is that is just the richest 10% doing the damage. And if we shared more equitably, everything would be fine. But this you know, little lefty argument ignores the fact that as nations develop, they consume more. And they have every right to do so. Capitalism thrives on over population. This is the number one reason that these clueless moron conspiracy wackos talking about the new world order depopulation agenda are the single most full of shit people on the planet, more full of shit than flat earthers. Anybody who believes that the new world order if you define it as I do, as the global corporatocracy wants to reduce this population, you are more hopelessly clueless than a flat earther. Let John explain this to you. Capitalism thrives on overpopulation. The more people the more competition for work, meaning cheaper wages and more profit. Governments want more people, as more people equals a higher GDP. The Catholic Church refuses to admit that condoms are not the work of the devil. Population has become unmentionable and with all sides singing from the same hymn sheet, the circle of silence on population is complete. This is why John Austin has 31 people on a planet of 8 billion following him. <clears throat> Today, we want everything fixed immediately, but population doesn't work like that. We have to wait. Time scales matter. <clears throat> Recently, I visited Stourhead in Wiltshire, where in the old stable yard, <clears throat> there are a number of big old walnut trees. Uh, I need to skip ahead, guys, before I choke to death. Uh, <clears throat> you know, talking about how long it takes for a tree to grow. It's the same with population. Acting on population is a slow process. Sea level rise is also a slow process. Sea levels are rising exponentially and will be rising for hundreds of years. Carbon in the atmosphere has already locked this rise in and it will happen. Unless we can find the miracle cure to prevent it. Hundreds of coastal cities are set to be swamped by unstoppable rising tides which will displace millions of people. As these areas become uninhabitable, corresponding falls in the human population could mitigate the loss of land as other housing becomes freed up. This would prevent the carbon-intensive and destructive need for building new cities in order to relocate hundreds of millions of displaced people. 
we should change the current narrative and talk about population as we did way back in the 1970s the benefits of a declining population are enormous we have never experienced a smaller population and so don't know what we are missing but here's what we are missing a world where population has stabilized means we won't need to build more. An end to the sprawling new estates on the edge of towns. An end to more dominating skyscrapers and lifeless roads built to connect these new developments. Emissions will plummet since building requires immense amounts of concrete fossil fuels, and human labor. This possibility is not considered in future emission calculations, despite the benefits it would bring. We are hell-bent on building for the economy. We need to change this mindset. <clears throat> if there were an effort to slow birth rates further, the only side effect would be economists panicking, self-interested politicians crying, and profiteering builders going bankrupt. The rest of us would raise a cheer. No more soulless developments planned in our towns and cities, and we could breathe a collective sigh of relief. We could concentrate on quality, not quantity. We could improve instead of expand. The vast force of workers who are constantly building more and more would be repurposed to quality employment and the environment would recover. And anyway, guys, we are a little bit over halfway through this. It is starting to rain in the rainforest. And I just wanted to do a little PS to this. Anyway, I'll put the link and you can finish up if you are one of the, third, the 32nd person on the planet wanting to hear one word what John has to say. So I just wanted to point out, I learned this great term from Andy the gardener yesterday, QED. QED meaning like, you, you know, to demonstrate one's argument. So where I am having this rant deep in the Mayan jungle where, uh, you know, the Mayan civilization collapsed. <coughs> How many hundreds of years ago did the Mayan civilization, we are in the middle of the Mayan civilization uh, <coughs> here. So now that uh, <coughs> this forest, <coughs> damn it, has somewhat recovered from the Mayan civilization, uh, where I'm standing here in this beautiful rainforest, and there's still monkeys here. There's monkeys living here <coughs> in flocks of Damn it! Flocks of parrots squawking. Uh, what this is, is in the middle of a new condo development called uh, Selva Escondida. <clears throat> the hidden forest. And so this patch of woods <clears throat> is getting ready to be bulldozed uh, any day now. Uh, the bulldozers will be coming in and uh, flattening the monkeys. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Damn it. I think I had a rainforest insect. We have not quite had the insect apocalypse. So, uh, sometime. <coughs> So this is real interesting. This is the biggest tree here. And I see where they have, uh, 
what they have done to kill this tree is they've gone around the buttress at the bottom of the tree. This is the single biggest dominant tree here. And you see where they've taken the chainsaw around the bottom of the tree and cut all the big roots trying to kill the single biggest tree here on this lot to make it easier to bulldoze. That's what this is about, is making this the biggest tree left in the forest easier for them to bulldoze. And so, uh, is this where I say QED? QED, uh, what's going to be here probably in the uh, next year or so are these condos. Now my guess is this is probably going to be four-story condos here because the new condos that they're building tend to be four stories tall. We're going to be moving uh, to Tulum in a couple of days and we're going to be staying in a four, fourth floor condo in the middle of a former rainforest. So uh, this is my uh, condo. Anyone who does not understand what uh, this man is talking about, what John was talking about in his essay. Uh, so these condos were a little over a year old. So a little over a year ago, these condos look like that. And uh, so here we are in the Selva Escondida, the hidden forest. Uh, so enjoy that forest while you still can because in a year from now the humans will have taken out and, and, and all of these condos I understand these are not housing for local Mexicans. 98% uh, of these condos are for snowbirds. These people here are actually from Germany. They snowbird from Germany there's this mostly Canadians, an unbelievable amount of Canadians. Of course, I'm from Ithaca, New York, that uh, these honkies, these snowbirding honkies, are the ones who have uh, absolutely annihilated this piece of rainforest uh, so they can have a second home because the home they have is not good enough. <coughs> But anyway, I am getting hungry and need to go find some tacos while I still can. My guys.